Hello there, it's Elizabeth here on the Dandy Soap DIY channel. And I had some crafting tips I wanted to share with you that I am using in my craft room. So, for all the crafters and DIYers, this might be a benefit to you. <clears throat> I know that sometimes getting organized and trying to get all the supplies close to you and next to you is really, really hard. And having an area to walk around in and work in because most of us usually have a very small area that we're working in. So I came up with a few things that are working for me and it might just help you. So follow me. I'm going to go in here into the craft so room. Crafting crazy. tips are some that I'm using uh, that have been beneficial because I'm in a very small room. I'm in like a bedroom. That was originally my office, still is my office. So I'm having to occupy and share that space. And so there's people in and out of it. But one of the things that I came up with that you probably have in access, and it is this rod up here. This is one of the spring-loaded rods like you hang in your shower for the shower curtains. Your spring-loaded um, shower rod that you can adjust and I have took and put up my florals and like these no, the poinsettias are they're puffy and they have the clip on them and I put them in a bag they'll keep the dust off of them and so forth but also keep them in shape because if you use the poinsettias you know they're really big and you have to kind of like spread out the leaves well this works really good so I can put one in the front one in the back of the bag and this one, you know, I was able to take and slide it into a plastic bag. And then I just punched a hole in it and pulled it around and tied it up there with some jute twine and a pin. And that way, when I need to get it down, I just unclip it and it'll slide right off. Also, like these are Christmas berries and they are they're, have a wire and they're real pointy. So I took and just tied them up and labeled them and just put them there. Also like the vines, they can hang right up there. But what I use is a ring. See the little uh, key ring that clips around? This is what's that. clever about that, that you're going to really, really love about this idea with your hanging up your crafts or signs or any of your reefs and stuff. So this is the other thing. Here is those rings and they are really large. And as you can see, I have put the three-dimensional or the more broader reefs on it. This way, you can do your puffy ones or your <clears throat> round ones and run your D-ring through it. And then, like, this particular shelf has holes in it. So, I can run it through there and clip it on. The third thing, of course, is if you have the pegboards. Uh, Dollar Tree has the pegboards now. You can also get them at any of your home improvement stores. And this one is made out of recycled plastics. It's real, really firm. And it did really good with this particular job. You know, these are the hooks. And the cool thing is you can do Amazon or you can do home improvement. And you can get these sets. And the hooks, uh, you know, they're heavy duty. And they'll have a set. It'll have things that you can, like, hang things, for example. Um, and also, Dollar Tree has these as well. These hooks. These hooks right here, I have my hammer on it. My mallet, rather, my rubber mallet. And you just hook it in to your pegboard. And then you can hang it in there. And it'll cradle it. And it's below the pegboard. Well, doing that, it'll take up less space, and it's still handy, and you can get to it. And um, So, here are the extra ones in the pack, and these are the ones that you're seeing right now. You'll be seeing these at, like, uh, Dollar Tree and different places. Also, these are the book rings, and that's what I've been using, these book rings. This is the book ring. This one has six in it, so you can get a whole lot of, like, reefs and different things on that that ring, that book ring. 
and you can hang them up and snap them together. I also hang up like my threads, um, you know, that come on the strands, like the cross stitch threads, yarns and spools because they'll be in a package and I'll hang on to that plastic package and then just loop them all together and just kind of let them uh, umbrella out. They'll cradle out like a carousel type of effect. Okay, the other thing that I came up with that you're going to love. Process, I'll show you this other little hack. That's that's the curtain rod in this craft room. And it's not interfering with my window being open at all. It is the reef hook, you know, that you hang your reefs over the door. And so you can use your reef hook. Here's the other thing that I did with it. The berries, see how I have them stacked? And so your berry vines or any of your vines that are round or looped round, you can slide over it and it will house them there. So, and here are the reefs. Now, this is the other hack I used. The hook plant hanger. It's the, it's the S hook, the one that goes over the top and then it, when it comes down, it has a big old hook here. And you can hang like hanging plants and things on. So if you take and like layer your reefs, it'll house all of them. And that is hung over top of that window. And then you can see how big that area is. So it's not, it, it's not going to interfere with your natural lighting in your room. And if you're in a bedroom like I am, that's like I said, shared with the office and the crafting, then you still get your natural lighting coming in here. And then you can have your overhead light. Okay, so the other thing that I want to show you with that is the signs that we get from Dollar Tree, whether it be ones we've made or ones that we are planning on, like altering and changing, you can hang them over the door. So we have them over the door. I have two here. And then that way you can hang these and they will lay, they'll lay flat. So just so you can kind of see how those are sitting and they'll lay better. And anything like, like this is one of the shower rack things that go over the shower. I have it and I'm using it like a shelf. So see, I can hang stuff on it like a shelf. And then this, those are pro, you know, the uh, Dollar Tree, um, plastic reefs that, you know, have the tinsel on them. They're wrapped up with the tinsel and so forth. They get crowded and they are puffy and they're big and they stick out and they take up a lot of room. And it's like, where do I put this until I can work it? Because, you know, with Dollar Tree, if you don't grab right then, you're not going to get it. So it's kind of like you want to go ahead and get it. So what I do is I put it, I put it in a plastic bag and then I put it on that hook. So I put it on the reef hook. But then I typed me out a paper and it tells me what each sign is inside of that. And I just have it hooked with a clothes hanger and the bag. And then I've written out, I've typed out and printed me, you know, a label to tell what all's in there. Okay, so the other thing, uh, the going back to those book rings I was telling you about, I have two. Thing, things that are small, like ornaments and stuff that come in these packages, especially like Easter, Halloween, and things like that where it's really puffy. This one is the Halloween. And so I took the D ring, or the book ring, and clipped those things together. And like this has one of those lanterns on it, and it puffs out. And I have this rack, too. So everything in here is doing double, triple, quadruple type of work, duties to it. And um, the other thing that I wanted to share is the over-the-door hooks that you can buy. At, so when you buy these, think about this is what I did. If it's something that has things attached to it, a sign or something like that, it has signs, you know, things attached to it and puffs out, those will be on the outer extremity. And anything that I can lie flat versus just hooking them on your hook, take and do them 
like lay them one, two, three, four, five, and then go back and do the in-betweens. So you'll do in-between one, or like two and five, and then go back one, two, three, you know, and layer them. And then that way, whenever you are getting ready to do something and you need to see what's there, you can real easily see it and you can take it down without having to clean the entire hook off. The other thing I have to share with you. If you have like the wire clothes hangers, you can take and string several spools of ribbon on there. There's 11 spools on this clothes hanger and just undo it at the top and I can hang it up wherever. When it had the hook on it, I could hang it in different places. But right now, it's working real good on the door. I can take it off. Um, the, so what I was the, sharing that, so regularly, you would have, like, your clothes hanger. And then you can literally loop them, take this untwisted, put your spools on it, and then twist it back. It'll go right back in place. Just use your needle nose pliers. Be careful. But with the blank signs, and they have the G-twine hanging on them, things like that, this is what I did. So I have my crate here, and this is Let It Snow, you know, and it's really, a, it's a fairly big crate. You know, it's, it's a very big crate. So what I did is I took and I put like the metal signs in the front and I put all the wood signs in the back. These are straight and they're smaller. I was able to get two rows right here in front. I was able to get the small metal, the small wood, and then these tall ones I stood up. And then they're just filed very, very easy. And that way you can really just, you know, just like a filing cabinet, you just go right through there and pick out what you need, the shape you're looking for, and what your goal is on that. So that was another thing I did. Now, what's cool about this, so don't discount it just yet. Do entertain it, and I'll tell you why. What's really cool about this is if you use the metal racks, let me show you the rack I'm speaking of. If you use the metal rags and you need more room, you set the box on top of the racks and then that way you can slide containers or different, like the, the wooden crates or the little wooden boxes or anything like that. You could slide underneath it and it'd be like a little cubby, but it will not interfere or de you know, like divert you from being able to get to the other ones filed in the box. So let me show you. So you could take these dish racks and you could set them underneath your wood crate and look how much space. Okay, so here's you another thing to do. The candy cane, the candy canes that go outside in the yard that Dollar Tree has, I string ribbon on it. I put my ribbon spools on it. And then I took push pins and I hung it over the door. Your big ribbon spools that take up a lot of space, that's what I have strung on that candy cane. And because I'm only using it outside, and most of the time it's Christmas ribbon that I will catch on sale, and they'll be these big, gigantic spools, and they're just really wide and really bulky at the end of the season when you catch a ribbon on sale or you have all that bulky ribbon that you were doing your DIYs and your crafting with, you know, put those big bulky spools. And so the hook coming about on the candy cane, so you can follow the candy cane. <laughs> so if you know that's the candy cane, but no one knows, they're like, how'd you get that up there? I'm like, pitch pins. <laughs> All right, here's another thing. If you have cabinets in your room, if you by chance have cabinets in that room, or maybe you could come across one, like Habitat for Humanity, or maybe, you know, curbside trash, or, you know, dumpster dot, whatever, and you come across a cabinet, or you create you some floating shelves. 
if you have the cabinet, do as I, you know, I'm just suggesting that, take the door off. You use it as a shelf. Yeah, that you hang your flower pots with, the, the basket hook, <laughs> and use the door of the cabinet to create floating shelves. Once again, that gets it vertical and it gives you a lot of room. I took the door off the cabinet. Anything that I don't have to get to in a hurry is in the top. Most commonly reached for in the center. And those things that are used but not as frequently, I put in the lower. And the reason why I do that is you guys know, as crafters and DIYers, we are the world's worst <laughs> to stack something on top of something. We'll go, oh, I'll, I'll get it in a minute or I'm using that right now. So anything that you use but don't have to get to as quickly, you know, use your lower level, your lower level. And then anything that you're constantly getting after, put it in the center. And then maybe you have a top. And then you can, that way you can do your shelves. Now, I generally have labels on there. But what I have gotten around to or gotten finished so far is the, the rolling carts that have wheels on them, little plastic ones with the drawers. I love those things. Well... I have several in in this particular room that works because, like I said, the area is shared. So sometimes you have to motor things out. You have to mobily move it out of the way. And this, having the roller wheels makes it better. So this is how I work this. I took and I have labeled them and I used washi tape to go around them. But I also kind of color-coded them so that I kind of know distinctly the orange, what's in the orange, the green, and the yellow. And then that that way I, I know at a bird's eye view just across the room, I know what's in that. So it, let's say I, say I was, you know, trying to finish something and I was in the middle of it and I'm trying to work quickly. I can real fast go over there and distinctly know instinctively, excuse me, instinctively know what's in that cart because it, I kind of color-coded it. Well, if you happen to have, if you run across or you have one. Now, I am in the older generation. When I came up in Corporate USA, filing cabinets, like you put everything in a filing cabinet, everything's in a folder, everybody's count and everything else. And at home, I did my paperwork the same way. Since then, and since the children are grown and the grandkids and I, I don't have to keep up with as much paperwork. So I have an extra filing cabinet, one of the short ones. And this is what I did. You can make one of these. Um, the clutter bug and also um, the fairy the uh, fairy declutter, I think it's, I, I watch both those channels. She had made one with a cardboard box and put the shell paper on the folders and made them accordion style. And she put a lot of her craft stuff in there. But if you have a filing cabinet that you're, you know, it has very little in it and you're using it, if you do like, uh, like the stickers and stuff and the stencils we do and the uh, any of the font letters and stuff that we do that are on the shorter ones, put it in the filing cabinet. That's what I did. That was the other thing I did. I, once again, my color code, and I just used washi tape to put it on. I printed this off, and I did this in the same way. So this is what I did, is on my stencils and any of my stickers and um things that I may Mod Podge, you know, that's paper and things like that to protect them, I put them in this filing cabinet. This way, I know these are my stencils and these are my stickers. Now, this is what... <laughs> you Utilizing the space completely. Let me, got, let me just share this with you guys. I want to show you what my dividers are. I didn't do no tabs or none of that divider stuff. The... Uh, Flatboard canvases that we use for our DIYs. That's what I used. So here, there's that's that's my famous divider for to keep my stickers separated from my rub-on transfers or my uh, other decals. Is I put that, but I used it this way. You know, because it 
that particular one is eight by 10, so it's perfect, you know, to as a divider. Now, when I put it in here to keep all that divided, the other thing I wanted to share with you that I put in this filing cabinet, I know because I know somebody's already saying, well, how are you going to keep them from getting mixed up or falling or, you know, laxadaising in that filing cabinet? Got the answer for you. You're going to love this one. Okay, you know the magazine boxes that we put our magazines in, those standing boxes? I hope you can see this. I'm going to try to show you because I really don't want to take it out of this filing, box, uh, filing cabinet. I took the magazine uh, holders, the plastic boxes that are, you know, they they have that slant to them, but they're deep enough that it will, when you've got your stickers and your stencils and your transfer stacked in there, it'll hold them. And that way you can keep them stacked in a box and you don't have to use folders and do all that mess because I ain't. I am one, I'm too busy, number two. I was just, that's just, I couldn't deal with that right now. It's just like, I need to get this done now. So I took the magazine boxes, see, that hold your magazines. There's the red one. There's the yellow one. And I'm not worried about the color because it's, you know, they're, I'm, I was using them to hold magazines. And uh, color coding really works good because I'm ADD and I'm always like easily distracted. And it's just, I need to like, I got to do it now. I got to do it now. So um, it's like a sense of urgency all the time. Everything's emergency, right? So that's what I did is I set those magazine boxes down in the drawer. And then I was able to file everything and keep them divided so you see you have the red one here and it has these little tiny stickers you know that's in a box and then like these they're real skinny and then like the the little decals and stuff that we have and then some of them are tall like the label stickers and then my rub on transfers rub on transfers you know i don't i don't want them to get hot or or get, you know, like get rubbed off or disturbed. And so I've separated them. So I'll have like my, like the stencils are a little more firm. So I just stick them in there. And then I put the transfers behind. And once again, dividing it with the canvas board, you know. So I can take and stick that down in there as my divider. And then that way the drawer looks really nice and clean and easily gotten to. And I can real quick just thumb through there and, you know, pick out what it is I'm going to use, what I need. And so that was another thing I thought you guys might like. Once again, using the containers like um, this one, this, that one's the metal and like, you know, some of our decals are really tall and they're just really long and or they're puffy. And so that's the, how I did that. And I just use this, use this container instead. Once again, if I need to, I can take those racks, put under it and build it up. Um, Any kind of buttons or beads, uh, I, you know, a lot of time like the salsa jars, those hold my jute twine when I'm using it on my table. There's a video on the channel here if you'd like to see how I fancied mine up and pierced a hole through it and run my jute twine through it. And I'm talking about the jute twine that's on the, the standings, you know, the the more elongated, skinny, round ones. There's like three in a pack. And that way it'll still come out of the, of this size jar, this, this salsa, Tostito salsa jars, and then my buttons. Um, things, you know, just anything to compact, but at the same time, make it still easy to get to and reachable and usable. But let me now, show you one more thing. And if you deal with the mesh to make reefs and things like that, you know, they're long rolls. Some of them are short rolls. On the long rolls, I take a cardboard box and... And I try to find me, you know, you usually keep my eye open and find a cardboard box that the depth of that box is the length of those mesh rolls. 
and you know keeping them in shape so they don't get all wonky and they don't fray and get messed up and things like that and i lay that cardboard on its side the good thing about it is i it has handles and if i need to i can take the cardboard box set it down and use out of it when i get done i can put it back up so you can either close i leave my top open i actually cut the top off the cardboard box you can turn your cardboard box and you can slide them in and out and then like the foam uh, reef forms they're really puffy and round and la they'll take up room so all of that fits really good and what I'm able to do is put like um, uh, the, the the loopy mesh you know that looks like the tubing mesh the tubing mesh and also any artificial flowers and reefs and things that are extra I can lay on top of that box now I have this on a high shelf because remember this is not something I'm using constantly and often but at the same time if I needed to I could close the box and place it somewhere else for time being and then get it back out because I don't do as much mesh as I used to. I used to do a lot of those uh, mesh reef orders and in the falls usually when mine come rolling in people are wanting something in the fall and in the Christmas season. You know other seasons they'll use the grapevine reefs and things like that. So one, you know just showing you that again that cardboard box and the rolls of mesh that's in there if any of you have um, come across one of those k-cups or um, like the paint racks that are the cage and grab it because you can use it to put those little paint bottles in now the k-cup one I haven't used it yet. I haven't needed to. Um, but I am thinking about putting it on my table when I'm crafting to put my small bottles in. Because I use a lot of the Waverly chalk paint. So I haven't really had to, you know, have it um, at my beck and call. But one thing that I do have for the little Waverly bottles is at Dollar Tree, they have these. These little, uh, the little plastic ones these will hold i think it's six of those bottles at one time all together and what i'm talking about is when i'm using the little waverly chalk paints the small bottles and let's say fall and i will put what this will be like my working basket and then that way i have more room on my crafting table which is a folded out card table guys that's what i use i actually use a card table and i've got all that stuff on there i've got my caddy i have my tear tray i have another uh tear tray that's the two layer <clears throat> and then my mat and there in my glue gun and all the stuff i gotta have i gotta have my scissors and paint markers and stuff so i've been doing like they used to do us in school they give you a working caddy. So you, in your caddy, your look, you put your little paints in your little caddy, and you would take it to your table, and then when you get done using it, you had to put it up at the end of the class. <laughs> well, that's what I'm doing to myself. That way I can give myself more space on my table because, I mean, that thing just gets, my table kept getting shorter and shorter and shorter. I don't know if you guys had the same problem. So I got me a little, I'm just using them for working trays. And the cool thing about that is when I'm cutting off ribbon and I, I got all these little pieces laying around and and most of the time when I've painted something, my trash can for their drying rack, I mean, I just want to know, you know, talk to me and tell me, do you use your, my waste basket's like to the right of me and it's really handy. So to get it off the table, and it let it dry because I'm real impatient. My the outside out of mine is, I'll make my makes me behave myself. So when I paint it, I will straddle it across my waste basket to let it be my drying rack, and so that that works out good. I I hope. Yeah, I'm not the only one that does that. So most of the time, I've got these little pieces that I've cut off. And I can't rightfully put it in trash this yet because, well, if I do, it's going to land on my piece. And trying to reach over it 
that piece to get into the trash can and mess it up. So a lot of times I'll have it there. So I'll just kind of sweep it up with my hand or whatever, and I can I can throw it in my little working tray. <laughs> just move right on down the line with my production of whatever I'm crafting and making. Okay, the reason why I was telling you about the K-cups in the rack is this. Put those paint bottles in it. And now this one, when I bought it, I bought this from AC Moore. I don't know if any of you ever shopped at AC Moore. It holds like 108, 108 paint bottles. Now you can buy one that's in good condition and Amazon has plenty and I'll put some links down below. You're welcome to use my affiliate link. But, but what I'm saying is if you have one of those K-Cups or you do the napkin rack from Dollar Tree and you glue them together, those hold, 20, you know, one's going to hold 14, if you make one set, 14 bottles. So if you make two of them, that's 28 bottles of paint. That's like phenomenal. It's awesome. And that's a lot of paint. Yeah, I know we all have being them, right? <laughs> so that's okay. And if a new color comes out, you gotta go get it too. And then when you're at Walmart, you're like, well, I might run out, so I might better get me a bottle. But these are the longest lasting little two ounce balls. I love them. And so I did this. When I put them in this rack, I took the white chalk marker, which is like a crayon. I don't know if any of you have gotten it from Dollar Tree, but the Dollar Tree chalk marker, let me show it to you. This thing's like a crayon. It's the coolest thing ever. That one. And it writes like a crayon. Well, I took, <clears throat> if that's a new bottle, if it's a new bottle I've just bought, because that's a chalk marker, it's not going to hurt anything. And I, about everything in here I've labeled with this thing. I wrote, I wrote the letter N on it. Now, that's just so I know that that's a new bottle. N for new. And I wrote N on it. So, all of these bottles, all the ones that I bought that are brand new, I marked them with a chalk marker because I can rub that off. It, it's not going to hurt anything. But that way, I know that that is a fresh bottle of paint. And especially if there's something... Like if somebody's ordered something and I'm making it for somebody, I want the best. I don't want none of the quality being, you know, compromised or the integrity of that product. Because me, if it's me, I don't care. I'm use, I'll i use all my stuff. But if it's for somebody, I want it to be new and fresh and nice and smooth. And I don't want to have any corners with it. I don't want to have any hang-ups or holdbacks and keeping me from getting that DIY done and that that product made for them whatever they're purchasing another thing is like these containers like like what i did like when it's a plastic container this thing writes on these and they don't smear it's awesome and i mean it's like a crayon you can like look isn't that cool i'm like so impressed i'm like oh i can write on my plastic containers that's cool so that's what i did i did you know, with, you know, all my plastic containers I put stuff in, like this one right here, this is a big one. Like that. See? I can, I can stack it all the way full, and I don't have to wonder what's in it, and I don't have to sit down to computer or go to my, you know, my brother's scan and cut and do my vinyl. I don't have to worry about any of that. I can just write it on. And you guys, you already know the Dollar Tree has these uh, chalk markers in different colors. You know, they got like um, pink, uh, purple, blue, the white. I've seen them in different colors. You, you're going to love them. Try them out. You're going to really, really love them. Um, and then that way, you know, if you got containers, you, you can write that on it because, you know, just... If you want to remove it, you can rub it off. So or the big jars, like you used to get your um, hot sausages and pickles and stuff in, and they are glass, and they have a metal lid on them. One thing that I use them for, and I've always I started doing this a couple years ago, is I put ribbon in it. So take that beautiful one-gallon jar, and I want you to look how much ribbon and you can get in it. And it keeps it clean, dust-free. You don't have to worry about it 
getting stained up or getting dingy in color and or having to waste some of the outer ribbon in order to get to the good part putting it in that glass jar and putting the lid on it and i've got room in this jar for more i mean i could actually you know put some more in there and then as you use it up it's going to clear out space so that's just a something else that i do um with my glass gallon jars i don't discount them and the good thing is you can stack those uh, you can get plenty you can lay them on their side and get several in there and you could just take uh, like the canvas boards and use those as your divider which would make it more keep them from rolling uh, but that's that's so easy you can um if you're going to lay them on their side let me let me out for this little tip for uh organizing your craft area and your crafting um the foam mounts that we buy you know used to do a lot of people do it for uh their scrapbooking and crafts and stuff the foam boards if you take and just put one on one side and one on the other that way when you if you need to lay it on its side it won't roll it'll work like a scotch guard and it'll just kind of scotch your jar and keep it from rolling and it'll stay in that spot so just the fyi on that just I hope that helps someone. <laughs> if you have these beautiful gallon jars and they're just sitting around and they're empty, put your supplies in there. Put the be the wooden beads or the spools, round spools. You could stack so much stuff in those things. And then that way you can scotch guard them if you need to lay them on your side. This is Elizabeth. And I hope you guys benefited from these uh you know, tips for crafting and for the crafter and getting organized, uh, these tips to get organized uh, for your crafting. And and maybe share with me, let me know some tips that you're using because I would really appreciate any help you can offer. If y'all have some ideas and some things that you do uh, to help you stay organized and help things be in easy reach that minimize the stress uh, for carpal tunnel, bear me in mind, um, and that will help, you know, keep me organized. Please, by all means, share them. These bags, these, they have a drawstring. Let, I don't, I don't, let me show this thing off. If you guys have walked by these things and did not get them, you're going to kick yourself. These bags, they have a drawstring and they have a long handle. Take that bag right there and, like I said, I'm going to show it to you. It's got the drawstring. So you mash the button, drawstring. You're not going to believe how much ribbon, uh, styrofoam balls, uh, I, I, fabric, so much. Look at this thing. It will hold two gallons of stuff. It will hold almost two gallons of stuff. I mean, technically two gallons because it's fabric and it, it, parachute material and it, it it will really hold it. It's so beautiful. It's nice and round. Guys, don't walk past that in the Dollar Tree. Get you a couple of them. I'm going to show you. You seen it was all the way full and it has beautiful shape to it. And I have a, this, this is what I did. And I take a piece of paper and I write what's in there and then I just tape it around it so that it slides, you know, and just, I just tape the paper to itself. There is my styrofoam balls. I have the small, the mini, the medium, uh, and the tiny styrofoam balls in there but if there is stuff that you have that's bulky like styrofoam balls take up space um even our flowers you know seasonal like you know the christmas picks or uh your fall picks things you know you want to protect them and keep them clean i cannot think of a more hand i mean look how big this is it's, it's bigger than my head <laughs> it's huge it's huge do look for these bags at Dollar Tree. Get you a couple of them. You won't regret it. Remember I told you, you get older, you go vertical. Everything, you got to go up. You know, everything starts going up. And that's what you do.
you know. And this is like a little cabinet. Like, you know, you can't just, people don't want them anymore. They, they don't want to use them anymore. They don't match their decor or their home or whatever. Well, guess what? Y'all know, I tell you, lipstick and rouge, you can always put some paint on it. What's that? Using one of the grease splatter screens from Dollar Tree and some Jingle Blocks from Dollar Tree, in order to hold my earrings, I need to build this out from the wall due to hoop earrings and things of that nature and the thinness of this. So I will take some E6000 along with hot glue and glue some Jingle Blocks on four corners per se of this circle and then I'll attach it to the wall with command strips. Here's the splatter screen that's been converted now into an earring and necklace holder. Here we have our cosmetic cookie sheet tray with all the cosmetics nuzzled together, magnetized, and using the command strips was easy to mount this to the wall as well. One large and one small. And the new item I showed you here is the magnetic push pins. This made hanging the hoop earrings and the earrings with clasp on them a breeze. And as you can see, they easily magnetize to the screen. They look like a push pin without the pin. They put a magnet in place of it. And you can easily place those wherever you like. There's eight to a pack. Here's some other command strip hangers that I use for necklaces and scissors. Is using the command hooks to hang up your hair dryer. Additionally, I added these, a Dollar Tree basket, and that made placing my mousse, hairspray, and any other items I like to my cabinet door. Very easy. Here's a few things that you wouldn't imagine would fit or even hold. But if you have the right amount of magnetic strip attached to the item, it will very, very easily attach to the cookie sheet. And that is mounted with command strips as well. Just be sure to watch the pounds on the command strips and use them directly as they are directed on the package. Because I can magnetize all the way around. But I hope you enjoyed uh, some of these tips for um, helping you organize your crafting, and that way you can get to it. And also, if it helps you with your craft room organization, all the more better. But if you want to, like, message me or send me something, you've got my email address. It's on the channel. It's underneath every video. And you can always go to the About page, check out everything there. You can also see... You can click on it and go right to the Instagram. You can send me a DM on Instagram if you want to reach out to me and get in touch with me. Thank you when you share my video, and thank you when you let me know some shortcuts or a better way or what you would like to see on the channel. Use the comment box. Let me know if you would like for me to do this or do that or try this or try that. Anything that you're looking for that you want to see me do. Until the next one, I'll be crafting y'all. Bye.